everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today is Meat Monday, so I'm going to share a little video of my dinner. You guys never get to see what I eat, but I ate, I made um, some chicken. I did it early in the day, and I kind of nibbled on it for a while. I didn't finish it all. I ended up giving some to Jim, and I told him I would make more if he wants more. Uh, but he hasn't said yet, so... I'll show you that right here. Today is Meat Monday, and I'm having chicken. I will probably eat most of this. I don't know if I'll eat it all or not. It's just plain chicken that I cooked in bacon fat. And I'll sprinkle, actually, I'm going to sprinkle cayenne pepper on top. I don't know if that's allowed, but I'm going to do it anyways, because I like things spicy. So a little cayenne pepper is going on top. Hope you have a great day with your Meat Monday, too. Okay, today I'm going to entitle this one, and it was given to me, the title came to me by Kimberly Crates. She said this, this is an open book challenge, which I hadn't heard of that, but I'm glad she mentioned it. So, Kimberly, thank you very much for giving me a title for this video. It's going to be called The Open Book Challenge, because I guess I'm an open book today. And because you gave me the title, you're going to be the first person that I'm going to answer the question to. So this question came from Kimberly. She wants to know what my guilty pleasure is. Well, the one guilty pleasure I have is I like potato chips. And I don't buy them very often, but when I do, I make them last a long time because I know I'm not going to buy them again for a long time. So that would be my guilty pleasure. Well, why don't you buy them? Oh, the reason I don't buy them is I would want to eat them and they're high in carb and you're not supposed to have them if you're eating keto. And I really try to do keto the way you're supposed to do it, but you know, I fall off the wagon a lot. I'm one of those people that really, if I can have pasta, I'll have pasta. And if I can have potato chips, I'll have potato chips. Uh, yeah. Not good. Then she wanted to know what was my best vacation I've ever had. Well, you know, a lot of people have asked that one. I got that asked by, I can tell you who else asked me that question. Let me see where if I can find the answer that I wrote down. I did write down an answer because I don't know. Um, rides, I think, was one. Let me see. Yeah, probably was. Oh, it's on the back. It's, it's Randy's Rides asked me that. And I think there was others but when I get to them I'll let you know that that was one of them that was asked okay what was my best vacation well hmm I've gone on a few with the bike the first one that we did on the bike that I really was shocked that we were doing it was the year my mother passed away oh before I begin to tell you where I've been <laughs> I who know it. I want to say happy birthday to my dad, who would be 107 if he was alive. He died when he was 93. Yesterday was his Italian birthday, and today is an, his American birthday. Um, was it on this paper I wrote? Yeah. Uh, let's see. He was born 1913, and he died when he was was 93 and he'd be 107 years old. He passed away in 2006, and he died on All Souls Day, which in my mind was the best day ever because those are the, that's, if you're Catholic, you, you kind of believe that if you die on All Souls Day, that soul goes directly to heaven. So that was a great day to die on, if you're gonna die. Um, also, I was going to mention my mom as long as I mentioned my dad. My mom died July 5th, 2010. And she was four months short of being 80, 90, I mean, four months short of being 90. She died at 89 years old. And they were married 63 years. Yep, that was, that was um, what I wanted to tell you. So, happy birthday to my papa. Who would be 107? Uh, can you imagine being 107? Well, anyways, now where I had traveled. Now, the year that my mother died, which was 2010, 
I wanted to go to Camp Fenchon. I don't remember where it was at, but the only reason I really wanted to get there was I wanted to see the Teen Queen competition because two of my girls were in the Teen Queen competitions before, and usually that was the part that interested me because I liked the talent competition and I liked I just liked the commotion of that. That was the best part of the, the Camp Fenchon. And we were going to miss it because of my mother's funeral. Now that was in July. So my husband says, do you want to take a ride to Florida on the bike? And I says, to Florida? Really? And he goes, yeah, we'll go see your Aunt Rosemary. So we got on the... It, it started out, I asked you on the way back from going out to Lake George for Americade. Did you? Did yep. you ask me if I wanted to go to Florida? Yep. I we, don't remember we that. We talked about it on the way home from Americade. Mm -hmm. Well, Lake you remember that. I don't remember it. But we did go to Florida and we went on the bike. And it was, and when we were leaving to go, you know how you, 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 always I always got permission to go everywhere it seemed like and I said to him I said I feel like I should be calling my mom and asking her if it's okay if I go to Florida on the motorcycle and then I remembered the reason I'm going to Florida is because my mom we had just buried her and we were not going to be able to call her on the phone and he says it's okay your mom will say it's okay but it was sort of sad because I already always had attend had intended to take my mom to Florida, but she never got to go. And it was before FaceTime. It's too bad, too. There was so much that they missed out on. FaceTime would have been another good thing. And all the videos that we watch that travel around the world and go places, my father would have really enjoyed that because he could have seen his um, country of Sicily. And visit. There was one. I was watching a video that they were actually in Sicily, and it would have been kind of nice to be able to see that. So there's a lot of things that they missed out on. But yeah, you know, Florida was the, I guess, the best trip that I took. Or you could say my honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my no. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know what it's, you know, I'm lying. No. <laughs> no, and the honeymoon was good. Um, we went to, we went to Cooperstown. And so we went to the Fenimore House and we went to the Farmer's Museum and we went to the Baseball Hall of Fame, which was okay. We went on a, a nice little boat ride. I took a Dramamine before because I get motion sick and I, it put me to sleep. So I slept through the whole ride of that. I don't remember it at all. I remember waiting for the boat. We had bought a loaf of bread and some fluff and some, and olives. some olives and some pepperoni. And we had to buy um, two spoons because we had to eat our fluff. <laughs> <laughs> so that I remember that part of it. And then we went to Corning. Corning has really changed. We went back a few years later, well, just a few years ago, I mean, mm -hmm. and it has changed a lot. It's way bigger than it was when we were there. Corning, Corning Museum Corning of Glass. Corning Museum of Glass, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Because it's different. Is it there's, different? Yeah. There's Corning as the city and then the museum. Um, well, we went to the Museum of Glass and we watched them blow glass and we looked at a lot of stuff that was there. We also went to Amish country. That was kind of fun when we went to Amish country in Pennsylvania and Ohio. And that's when I realized that the Ohio Amish people are way richer than our poor Amish people here. They live in really pretty houses. And the only way you knew it was an Amish house is you saw the clothes hanging on the line and you saw the buggy in the in the, um, the driveway or garage. They had, they had really nice houses. Ours, you can tell by their curtains, and there's no power lines going to the houses, of course, and, and none there either. And the windows, you can tell by the way they, and they have a blue door usually. I don't know if that's a thing just in our area, but they have blue doors. So you can tell it's an Amish house by the blue door. We went to, I don't remember this, but I didn't know it was in Thousand Island. And he said, that's not far, but we went there to the Biltmore Mansion. And that was a mansion that when I went into, gave me the heebie-jeebies because the poor lady, the husband was building it and never got finished and they 
he passed away or she, she passed away and so the house never, finished. never got finished but I, I felt like I felt like the spirits were following me around I really felt sadness in that house really sad but it was a beautiful beautiful house and then we went on a few other trips but I don't know where we were because I'd say to Jim where are we because we'd be in one town one state one day the next day we'd be in another state so I don't know where we were okay that was um still on Kimberly's boy this is gonna take a long time I'm probably gonna to have to do this in a few videos because I elaborate too much see this is what would happen if I get to talk because if I had to type all that you'd never get it never in a million years okay her last question was if I could teach humans just one concept what would it be I would teach them compassion and kindness and empathy I guess compassion was is is it shows kindness and empathy if you have compassion because I find that a lot of people will laugh at things if you get hurt but they don't feel anything for your pain and I think they need to, to feel that okay that's the end of Kimberly Kreitz's questions now the next one I had was simply Jan if you could do one thing differently in your life, what would it be? Well, I'd be braver. <laughs> I would have let Jim, when we first got married, Jim wanted to build an underground house. And all I could think of was a mole living underground and real dark and gloomy. But had I been braver, we would be living in the ground today. And at the time in the 80s, houses weren't very pretty and there was nothing to go by that he could even show me that would be lovely but now they have these houses that are absolutely gorgeous and it would have been very economical because the temperature would have stayed pretty much the same no matter what because like when it's cold outside and if I go into my basement my basement stays at about 60 degrees which is pretty good and that would be comfortable in the winter because we'd add a little heat and in the summer that would feel like you had air conditioning when you really don't that was simply simply Jan Homestead asked that question and now area 51 farms with Dr. Beth she asked me she says and her question was I know you play guitar well sort of <laughs> how long have you played well I took a 10-week class before I met Jim so it would have been over 45 years ago at least I took a 10-week adult class. I didn't even own a guitar at the time. I borrowed a guitar. And the reason I took the course is I wanted to learn a few, few chords and I wanted to learn how to pluck. And they taught that. I learned two ways of plucking. I, finger plucking and the, um, the Johnny Cash kind of plucking. <laughs> the one, two, three, four, five, six plucking and the Johnny Cash kind of plucking thing that his songs have. And um, she wanted to know what other instruments I could play. Well, I can play a lot, but I can't play anything. <laughs> you dabble. I that. dabble, yes, I do. I can play. I took French horn in high school, so I, I suppose I could play French horn. If I had to, I could play. I played fourth horn, which was the lower notes. And I can do the upbeat, because uh, the French horn always did the upbeat on things where the other instruments did the downbeat so if you hear the mm, ba 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 I was the ba on the upper hand of it okay and I can blow out taps on the trumpet I um did I can play a song on the mandolin <laughs> one song and I can play a flutophone I can actually play songs on the flutophone, but it's very, very juvenile. And the recorder, the same thing, very juvenile. And when I played the piano, I would make up my own chords. I can read the melody line, but I could never read the bass line. So I would make up my own chords. I could tell what chord would go. And there was a music teacher that actually said that's a talent that a lot of people that can read music can't do. And I just found it very easy to do that. I do have a squeeze box. There was a lady that died down the street, and I knew she had a squeeze box because I used to do her hair. And when she died, I asked the family if I could buy it. 
I sent it home with my brother because I figured if anybody can learn to play this thing, it might be my brother. And he could play um, some music on it. I haven't played it in a long time. I don't even know if I can play anything anymore. But I can make it make sound. And I can play one song on the accordion. But I don't know where I put my accordion. I went upstairs in the attic and I was looking for it. We've got to really put some lights up there because it's too dark in the corners and I've packed things kind of in front of each other so I can't tell. But that was, and I do have a drum. I do have a snare drum, but I don't know how to play it. I can beat on it. And I do have a bongo. I like to play on that. You have a drum machine? Like and I have an drum electronic machine. drum machine, but I don't really play it. How about the ukulele? And I play ukulele. You that one I do. That one I do play. I like the ukulele. Um, and she wanted to know whether I sing alto soprano. Well, I was considered a high soprano when I was in high school. I was in the Coraliers. And recently, when I was in a choir, I, pl I sang mezzo soprano. So I guess I'm soprano. I prefer soprano over alto. Alto has the harder, I think altos have it harder because they, we usually get the melody, very seldom does an alto get the melody. And it's so much easier if you have the melody of the song to learn to sing. Okay, now um, the next one, oh gosh, that one's got five questions. I better wait with that one. <laughs> I'll wait on that one. You want to circle the name so that I know I have to do that one? It has six questions, actually, here, and this will go with it eventually. Okay, um, getting started on Homestead, he has a short question. He wanted to know if my jaw gets tired from smiling all the time. Well, you know, <laughs> that's a good one, because sometimes you, you're smiling so much and you go, Oh, oh, my face, it hurts. <laughs> yes, it does some days. So, yes, I do get, um, my jaw hurts, my face hurts sometimes. And brown eyed, brown, uh, no, brown eyed, I wanted to call her brown eyed girl. <laughs> She's not a brown eyed, I don't know, maybe she does have brown eyes. I've got brown eyes, but brown girl life. She wanted to know if I sent her snow, because she got snow. Well, if I could send it, I really would send it, but no, I think Mother Nature gave you your your snow, and you, and you liked it. <sighs> you got several inches. I, I'm glad, because we didn't get anything last night. <laughs> We, we got rain. We got rain instead. And so I let the chickens out for a little while. So that was brown. And do you want to put this with that other one because that's got the top, the other questions for it? Okay. And um, Animal Papa wants to know Are you born and raised in Western New York? Yes. I have always lived in Western New York. And I live approximately three miles from my. Homestead where I grew up. Huh? Your birthplace my, or homestead? Well, my home where I grew up. I wasn't born there. <laughs> I wasn't a home birth. I was a hospital birth. And have I been to Texas? That's Diane Parker wants to know. Have I been to Texas? I did go to Texas. Jim was sent to Brownsville. They have a plant in Brownsville. And he was sent down there, and I got to go with him. And I went to um, St. Padre Island. South Padre. Or South. Well, I want to kind of keep on it Saint. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's South Padre South. Island. Why? It's, it should be the other. Why. I don't know why I want to say that, because Padre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Okay. <clears throat> it's South Padre Island I went to, and we flew into Harlingen. Harlingen Airport is where we flew into, and then we drove from Harlingen to Brownsville. And I stayed on South Padre Island in Texas. I had a great time. And Kim Isom wants to know, do I have children? Yes, I do. We have four children. We have one boy, and we have three girls. And I did write their ages down on another page. Let's see. We'll do uh, simply striving for a simple life. That's Tina. She wanted to know if I had kids too and grandkids. So we'll we'll answer. We'll answer. Um, once. Yeah, Kim. I some I S O M I some. We'll answer her question and striving for simple life, which is Tina. We'll answer hers at the same time. And they both want to know if I have children and how many. 
And I'll, um, Tina also wants to know if I have grandchildren. Okay, I have four children. We have four children. We have one boy that's 39 and three girls. They're 38, 33, and 29. And then we have seven grandchildren. Um, their ages are 14, 12, 10, 11, 8, 8, and 4. I have two of them that are the same age. And well, I was going to say something else when I was thinking of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's gone. Let's your, see. Your two oldest are how far apart? Oh, they're minus a day to be a year apart. Those poor things. In fact, a lot of people thought they were twins when we'd go play. And then when we had the foster children, we had a girl that was 12 and a boy that was 5. And somebody said to us, oh, now that's the way to have the kids. You got an oldest one and then a bunch of little ones. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't know that they weren't ours. And also when we had this little black boy. That was so funny because we'd get really dirty looks when we had this little boy. And he was the cutest little thing. He was the one that used to run up in the weeds. And I'd tell him, you know why I don't trace you up there? Because I used to, you know, I could run just about as fast as these kids. But if they went into the weeds, I'd stop. I'd say, I don't go up there. You want to know why? And he goes, why? You're afraid to come and get me? And I said, no, there's snakes. And he would run back out. But he was, he was cute. But we used to get a lot of dirty looks from people. And when people would kind of, you could hear him mumbling something, I'd say, well, he looks like his father. <laughs> <laughs> which he probably did for all I know I don't know um, and Jan from this will be my last one because this is getting pretty long I think I don't know how long I've been going mm, quite a while quite a while okay Jan from New York City saves money this is her question she wanted to know what is the daily walking steps required to equal the million in six months well, I broke it down because Angie from Angie Brown Girl, I think was her name. <laughs> I want to call her Brown Eyes, but it's Angie Brown. Angie Brown Girl. What's it say? Brown Girl Life. Brown Girl Life. Okay, I don't need it. I, now that you told me. <laughs> okay, she broke it down, so I just wrote down her numbers and then. To make sure I had it. Okay, per day you have to walk 5,525 steps. Now if you do per week, you have to do 38,675. Per month, you have to do 154,700. And in six months you'll get the million. And there's one more apricot tiny house. She wants to know how tall is Jim? Well, he's only 5'9", but I'm 5 feet, so he'll never be as short as me. <laughs> I guess that's it for today. Well, this one's done. I've got, um, and this one's done. I've got, oh, I've got a few more, but I'll, go, I'll do them on another day. I've got Minimalism by Anne. She's got 10 questions. Wow. I've got Out West Homestead, Danny's Happy Farm, Louisiana, Randy's Ride. Well, I did his because he wanted to know where my best vacation was. Florentin. I have to learn how to say his last name. I have to look for at, at the other video of where they said it. I don't know. It's 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 T I S E, but it's not it's not said like that. I wrote it down in a, one of my notebooks, how it's really supposed to be said, so I will do that. And um, yeah. and I have that other one that has... Mary the, Cleveland. And is that her last name all the way? Mary Cleveland. I've got her questions to answer. And that will be all tomorrow because these are these actually could be like tags. They're ones that a couple of them did. So I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. Bye. Thank you.